Stop whatever you were gonna do Cause it's time for Nick and the crew to Tell you all the lore that you never knew About your favorite media, my dude Stuff you're too lazy to look up Nick and the boys gonna hook you up From Halo and Batman to religious stuff Lorecast is starting, so shut the hell up Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lorecast. My name is Original Nick, and today we're talking about something that um, has recently come into my mind. Uh, there's a, ep- a really weird episode of American Dad that I've been watching lately, uh, and I've had to watch it three or four times. It's Rabbit Ears, Season 14, Episode 4. Uh, by the way, this one is totally unscripted. I've been trying to do the scripted, like, here's all the talking points, but this one... I feel would rather, you know, lend itself more to the the, the Beatle cast uh, formula of F it, we'll do it live. Uh, so that's what we're doing today is talking about this really odd episode of American Dad. Probably my favorite uh, next to the indie movie one. I don't know why. That was like season nine, I believe, where Steve, Snot, and Barry, and Toshi all go on like a an indie film adventure with the with the rock music driving from uh, uh, Virginia to California. It's pretty cool. I, I like that episode a lot. Um, so, but Rabbit Ears is a more mm, interesting video. It's uh, episode. So, uh, it starts off with Stan and uh Roger driving around at night, um, before trash day. So they everyone throws their like crap on the side of the sidewalk and Stan and Roger go and uh, start to start picking up other people's trash. Um, it, it doesn't matter what they get except for one thing. Uh, I don't want to like go too in detail like I normally do. Um, Roger finds like a baby bed and puts on a, <laughs> a loaded dirty diaper. It's disgusting. And Stan finds this really old ass um, deep you know, wooded TV from like 1970 something, like the really big ones. Um, maybe like 1990. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's a really big TV. Um, and, um, so when they get back into the house, uh, I guess another important thing is Stan also gets like a fondue machine. Uh, but I guess it's not really super important. Um, so Stan finds this TV and moves it downstairs, uh, but all of a sudden Roger's B plot comes in. The, there's only one B plot, and it, it's not really even a B plot. It's just Roger playing a baby. So it's mostly, uh, I guess, the loaded diaper turned him into a baby. I guess that was like his thing for that episode. Uh, all it does is drive Stan uh, downstairs to the new TV. He put the the big TV downstairs. So I guess the whole point of Roger becoming a baby is just to keep Stan out of there because uh it turns into like Francine and uh Steve and uh Haley and Klaus they're all like swooning over baby Roger he's so cute doing all this cute crap um but Stan is like wow he's a baby now and then he just goes downstairs and watches uh you know uh watch the tv but when he first gets it, he puts it downstairs. There's also a dirty, dirty ass mattress with bed bugs in it. Um, so he puts the mattress and the TV downstairs, and it's got antennas. So he's like, I mean, you know, starts doing all the different uh, common moving around the antennas to try and get a signal, but it's all static. Uh, he goes back upstairs, and uh, he's about to come to bed, but Francie's like, No, don't wake the baby. And it's Roger in a in a damn crib, so he slams the door. And then just goes downstairs and he sleeps on the, the bed bug ridden mattress. So, um, but then he wakes up in the middle of the night when a show finally comes on. Uh, it's Nighthawk's Getaway, I believe it was. Yes. I don't have anything pulled up like I normally do. Um, so Nighthawk's Getaway, it's, it opens up with this like jazz club on a, on like a penthouse. Think 1960s. You know, jazz, smooth, everything's slow. Uh, everyone is smoking a cigar or a cigarette, or everyone's got uh, scotch or whiskey in their hands. Um, and so he's like, 
wow, what an interesting show. He looks up the main, the, the host of the show, and nothing pops up. So he goes to the TV guide, uh, which is in shambles, obviously, because no one needs a TV guide anymore. He goes and he starts talking about, hey, I'm lo- looking about uh, Nighthawk's getaway. And this guy goes, uh, no such show has ever existed. Uh, about once a month, someone comes in and talks about it. And so he goes to this uh, group. You know, the guy's like, I'll meet it at the Culture Center or whatever. And then it goes um, to another character, a side character that we've seen a lot in American Dad, Tuttle. Tuttle's like, oh, you've seen it too. You've seen uh, the Nighthawks show. Uh, and he's like, uh, nope. And then he leaves. Uh, but then he gets back home, goes downstairs, watches his TV again, and he sees Tuttle inside the TV. Um, and he's like, whoa, what the hell? That is Tuttle. So he breaks into Tuttle's house in an obviously stupidly co- comedic way. Uh, well, stupid, comma, comedic way. Um, goes in and Tuttle's not there. His house is in shambles and ruins and the back of the TV is open and the static is pouring out onto the wall. Uh, he comes back to his house and he's like, family, come downstairs, look at this. And, and they come down there and it's obviously just static because why would it be showing what he needs to show um then he starts getting like obsessed with it like i have watching this episode literally i three times or three or four times within the past week and a half maybe two weeks um it's just so interesting i I also started watching twilight zone because of it so be expecting some lore cast on the damn twilight zone i love good show um so we then are taken to Stan sitting in front of this TV day and night. Make, he got a little notebook and he's like, because each time it changes, it's subtly different. That I forgot to mention that earlier. Everything subtly changes. Like there's a different waiter, a uh, different waitress. There's, you know, uh, a different guy in the background. So Stan starts getting this notebook and starts going in and, you know, writing down this time it was different, this time, this time, this time, till it's full. And then uh, he has Tuttle's note. It's Tuttle's notebook. And in the end, it says, I must go in. It's like, there's something I must be missing, so he he must go in. So he takes the back off of his TV, because that's why well, it was at Tuttle's, and the static spills over to the back of the uh, the wall, and he jumps through. And then now he's inside the TV show. He's inside Nighthawk's Getaway. Super interesting, and I was like, oh, what the what the hell? Um, the first time I watched it, it's, mm, it's good. I... Wish American Dad would do more stuff like this instead of the regular stupid stuff they do. Um, um, so when we get inside the TV, it takes place exactly like every episode, but now Stan is inside. So we get a first, you know, more first person perspective um, of what's going on. Um, so these people and there's like a big floating eye camera and it's the camera showing you everything that... Uh, that uh, the the host wants you to see. And so they're stuck inside the TV now, and Tuttle starts to remember less and less as the episodes go on. And then he starts, to, uh, Stan mentions um, BET, and this guy goes, I remember that. So that's from my time. I got to get back to the future. Oh, back to the future. Uh, and he tries to, to leave. That's when we find out the antagonist of this episode is actually the host uh oh spoilers um he turns into a mo- or, you know you don't know but he, he eats the the host eats the guy who's trying to get away and he's like oh damn so that's like the 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 thing is you're you're doing everything that the host says he even comes over and says so here's how it's gonna play uh stan he already knows his name and he goes hey stan so here's how it's gonna go you're going to love jazz. You're going to stand there with a the drink in your hand at all times, and you're going to do what I say. Um, so Stan's like, okay, I got a family. I got to start writing their names down. And uh, <laughs> he writes their names down, at, you know, Klaus, Steve, Roger, uh, Haley, and Francine. Then he looks down again, and it's all jazz. And then Tuttle goes, I forgot my family. And Stan goes, you don't have a family. Oh. Uh, so it goes on and they've been in the episode for a while and they're, they're trying to figure out how to get out. They, um, they hit the button and, you know, it didn't light up. Um, so that's when 
the guy, well, that's the the other guy couldn't get out because it didn't light up and he couldn't get out. So the next time the camera swoops in for the the opening, uh, the bit, they they scooch in the elevator. So it's like the elevator opens, the camera rolls in, and you hear uh, Corvax go. The, that's the host, and Corvax goes, "Welcome, Nighthawks." We've been expecting you. So whenever that happens, that's through the elevator and the camera comes through. Uh, so Stan and Tuttle go, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, and run in front of it. Then they get out down to this, uh, to the car. Uh, there's a car out front. And then they drive and they see color. They see uh, one leaf. It's, it's I keep forgetting. I should have wrote stuff down. But it's in black and white this whole time. They see one green leaf. It's like, that's the way to go. And they start driving. And they get home. Uh, to Stan's house, and when he opens the door, he's like, oh, my family, I missed you. He opens the door, and then there it is again, Corvax going, welcome, Nighthawks, we've been expecting you, and he comes right back to the penthouse. So they can't actually leave. They're thinking they're leaving by driving uh, away back to Langley Falls, but they're, you know, they're actually still within the episode. Um, That's when... Uh, uh, they, they try and leave one last time and um, they, they make a break for it. And then Corvax turns into this grotesque, like, th- I, I've, I'd probably describe him like uh, Hunsed Abadir from uh, Adventure Time, but a lot less charismatic, just more violent fangs and sharp claws. Um, and that's when they get, uh, they're about to be eaten. Um, but, uh, Corvax shoves him against the wall and Stan's head breaks through the wall of the night, the penthouse nightclub. And that's when the static comes through and Stan's like, I came in through the static. I have to leave through the static. So then he jumps through and they're back home. Um, well that, you know, they're, you know, they're coming through the TV. It's got a cool effect. Uh, they unplug it. So that's the, that's like the end of the episode. The whole Roger thing being a baby ends out of obviously out of nowhere. And he's like, I'll never let anything happen to you. And he's like, we're not doing that anymore. Oh, so I was like, good. Um, so I don't know. It's just there is an entire subreddit dedicated to this. Maybe not. I think it's yeah. there's an entire subreddit uh, dedicated to this one episode. People are really talking about this one episode. And after like a slew of crappy episodes, you know, that's how it goes whenever a, a TV show gets on for like too long. You know, 10 years plus is a long time to be on TV. Um, so obviously the quality starts to waver as you go on. But I don't know. The the lore of this episode um, is, I don't know, it's set up differently than every other episode. Because most other episodes are slice of life-ish, minus anything with Stan because it's CIA. So that's not really slice of life that's where you get the Haley steve thing Haley and steve uh episodes are very slice of life i would say um so i guess i've just been really telling you what this episode is and how it goes but so it, it kind of it's most of the time american dad is set within the real world right so uh it's really interesting to see this I don't know. I that was a stupid thing to say. I remember American Dad, Family Guy. They're not really set in the real world. Um, not really. There's a lot of stupid stuff that happens that makes it not. But uh, more so than usual, I would say this one is like a nice bridge between the super ultra natural, where they have like uh, they've had an end of the world one, or like the Book of Revelation episode. That was a really weird one. Really. Um, uh, they've had Roger's home planet at some points. So that's extraterrestrial. You have extraterrestrial, supernatural, um, within Family Guy, but it's supposed to be set more in real life, I would say, than uh, more other shows. You know, uh, like Rick and Morty's obviously not set in the real world at all, uh, but it's the most humanistic, I would say. Most, the most human. And the most relatable adult animated cartoon to me is Bob's Burgers. But you can't do lore on Bob's Burgers. It'd just be me regurgitating information, kind of like I am right now. But there's no deeper connection to anything because it's just the real world. And you're following a family, uh, having a good old time, 
watching him make some burgers. But um, so I would very much liken this episode to an episode of Twilight Zone. Um, I just started watching the Twilight Zone again, like I said at the beginning of the episode. Um, and it's supposed to be like a, a take on reality. So, um, but this one, I don't know. I don't know. It's just interesting to me. I love this episode dearly and I've had to watch it three or four times. I'm going to probably going to watch it a few more times just to really get the, the gist of it all. It's so the basic lore of this episode is take a, an American dad episode and make it nothing like an American dad episode, but also make it extreme like an American dad episode at the same time. Uh, that's all I have to say. I was just trying to get this off my mind. I've been, it's been killing me and I had to get it down in audio form. So thank you. Oops. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. Um, I will definitely see you all in the next episode of Lorecast. There's probably gonna be some more of this unscripted trying to just get something off my mind because the scripted episodes take for damn ever to make. They're super difficult. Um, there's not a lot of banter back and forth because it's just me scripting out and talking really seductively into the microphone. So that's what I'm going to do is get some more stuff just off my chest, off my mind, out into the real world. So um, thank you so much for listening. This episode would not be possible without the amazing support of you all who listen. Um, the theme song was made by Devin of Beetle Milk and Beetle Cast and sometimes part of Lorecast. Um, and obviously, big shout outs go to Podcast Evolved for making it to where I wanted to do podcasts. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you all in the next episode of Lorecast. <laughs>